welcome back to 30 apps in 30 days this is day 24 we're on the final descent i can see the finish line but we've still got six apps to go imagine if you'd rehearse your sales called a hundred times over so we're building a sales training tool got it yeah i'll just be entirely transparent with you we are definitely priced at the top end of the market but i'm not gonna skirt around that like a sat nav for sales bro although i must admit five thousand dollars seems like a pretty steep price for a sales training tool can you tell me more about why it's worth that much? So we're going to send that off to OpenAI and they're going to analyze the transcript. I think this has legs. I think this is pretty sick. Hopefully I'm showing that the barriers to actually building and vibe coding and shipping apps is much lower nowadays. And a lot of people would say, okay, you've launched the apps, but how are they going to make money? And there's a bunch of ways you can drive traffic to your app. Get signups, get a few paid users maybe. With these sorts of apps, the real money comes from sales. Doing sales enables you to sell into businesses that have a lot more money, that get a lot more value out of your apps. A lot of people struggle with sales. The thought of doing a sales call maybe makes their hands a little bit sweaty. They'd rather stay behind the screen. If you stay behind the screen, you're leaving a lot on the table. But I know for me, when I was getting into sales, it can be a little bit tough to get into. Sometimes the thought of a sales call used to make my hands sweat a little bit anxious. How is this sales meeting going to go? What if they say this? How am I going to respond? And I used to try and think about all the ways to navigate that. But imagine if you'd rehearse your sales call a hundred times over. Every potential objection that comes up. How to handle every different situation. That's what we're going to build today. So yes, we're building a sales training tool. That might sound a bit boring, but it's going to be fun. So stay tuned. We obviously we don't have time today to solve all the sales problems that people have. So we've got a niche down. So we want to help people kind of practice, rehearse their sales conversations. We're going to focus on one thing that maybe be like common objections. So for example, let's say we're sell sales training. People might say, oh, you know what, Alex, we don't really have the budget for this. So then how may I respond to that? Well, there's a bunch of different ways. And maybe I want to practice, see what feels natural, see what feels best. And then because it's a live conversation, there might be a few different ways of going about that. So that's what we're trying to recreate here. And we can actually do that off the record. I do think this is actually super helpful and probably valuable to businesses. So maybe this will be one we revisit. So yeah, here's the rough flow. So user comes to site, they punch in their product or service. They punch in their common objections. So my mate sells security driveway bollards. So one of the objections might be again, price. Uh, we saw a quote somewhere else that was cheaper or maybe do these bollards actually work? Or are these bollards shiny enough for my driveway? And then they select the difficulty. So maybe we can have a super tough nut to crack. Someone who's going to be trying to shut you down. Or maybe someone who's just, oh yeah, okay, fair enough. Cool. So tech stack wise, we're going to be using 11 lab. We're going to come to 11 labs. We're going to create a new agent. So we'll just start with a blank agent. Complete your agent. Choose a name that reflects your agent's purpose. A sales trainer. Sales trainer one. Because we might have a few. And I actually think that I think we should we shouldn't do chat only. I think the voice is part of the magic. And by the way, shout out to Eleven Labs for creating a nice experience here with their agent flow. Really nice stuff. Okay, there we go. Sales training one, and we've got this ID here that we can use in our app. But here we can start to see some of the settings that we've got going on. So we've got system prompt. So the system prompt this is like how we'd be prompting like your Claude. You know, when you say, "Can you behave like this?" It's a similar sort of vibe. So the system prompt is used to determine the persona of the agent. Describe. And we have this thing here called variables that we can basically inject into each agent's prompt. To each. So if you come to the site and you input that you're selling bollards, we can then give that information to the agent so that in the conversation, everyone has context of what's going on. So that does add a bit of magic to the flow. For now, we're just going to set this up nice and simple. Your role playing is a sales prospect. Give them objections around the item of selling. For now, let's start with a price objection. Ask them what they're selling to begin with. And we won't have to do this once we get the variable set up. We can just stick with the default agent for now. We don't really need any of this other stuff for now. What is workflow? Workflows are in alpha. That looks cool, but I don't think we need that now. Now, if you're ever down this way. I, do, I like this Texas guy. Can you believe it? Dream Tonic. I like this football guy, but maybe for now we just go. Architecture is the thoughtful of something simple. So we'll save that. So I'm going to save for the first message. Remind me what you're selling. So let's save that. And then we can just test this AI agent. So let's give it a spin. Hey, remind me what you're selling. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Now, what is it that you're trying to sell me today? 
I'm a busy person, so please yeah. be concise. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. No worries, no worries. We're selling some security bollards. Security bollards. Okay. I've been looking into those, actually. What's the price point? Because I've gotten some quotes that seem a bit more reasonable than what I was expecting to pay. Yeah, so it's about £600. £600 per bollard. That seems a little steep. What makes these bollards worth that much compared to other options on the market? So, I'll stop that now. But this is the exact sort of... That's the exact sort of flow that we'd want to put people in for training so that when they have those conversations, when someone's saying, oh, well, you know what, that's too expensive, I've got other quotes, that's where this actually comes to life and, in my opinion, is super valuable. Okay, we've got our convex here. We're going to start just with a Next.js convex quick start. So we're going to come here and we're going to make a new folder. Let's call it sales trainer. So we'll CD into that and then we'll run this npm create convex latest and we'll call it sales trainer. Well, there we go. We've got convex auth here at the box, which is pretty nice. Which I don't think we really needed that actually, but we'll chuck it in there. Why not? Run the following commands to start the project. Okay, so we'll CD here into sales trainer and then npm run dev and we should be off to the races. Lovely, easy. Did I just... There we go. Okay, so we just had a quick chat with our mate Flo and gave him a quick demo. Check out how it went. What's up, big dog? What's going on, bro? I think I cooked. You think you cooked? Yeah. Hold on, bro. I think there's something wrong with my fucking mic. Hold on. Hold on. Think... Yeah, it just keeps says I'm still here. I'm still here. I don't think it's got the right mic set up. If you go to your Chrome thing. Uh, hold on. Uh, I'm happy to tell you the price. I just need to understand a bit more about what it is that you're actually looking to do with these bollards. Got it. Yeah, I'll just be entirely transparent with you. We are definitely priced at the top end of the market. I'm not going to skirt around that. I think some of the things to look out for with some of the other installers out there is to ask questions around things like where are the bollards made and do they provide warranties? So we've got your sales call here and we've got a transcript. Love that. So what we can then do is go to Claude and say, hey, there's this cool transcript. Can you give me some feedback on how I could handle these objections better? Like, yeah, based on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We could have that in our app. So you, uh, is there another feature to zoom in a bit? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, okay. You didn't dodge the price issue and we're transparent. Okay, that's good. Use a smart reframe. Good. Okay, errors to improve. Be more specific differentiators. Imagine this, but actually like with all your information in, all your like, and imagine yeah. if you had all your other sales transcripts in and it could identify where you were like getting stuck on. And then it like, every day you sit down for half hour, just a back to back. Also <laughs> imagine if dur during a sales call, it was listening. A real sales call and then it was just like threw up like suggestions ideas yeah, that... like a sat nav for sales bro sales sat nav.com so sat nav i think this is valuable bro it is val a few moments later Charles, so what we're doing here is we've got an old project where we got 11 labs all set up so we've asked it basically to work out everything we did in this project so we don't have to go through that same trial and error and you can also do the same here in projects especially if you look at demo projects if you go to a github of a tech you're trying to use you can look at example projects clone that ask claude to make some docs or a lot of the time they have good docs but if you want to really take it that next level you really want to take it there then you can do what i'm doing here and you can see we've got all these lovely docs so we can give that to claude here so we can paste that in and i've little create.md file and then i've said create a simple agent with some of the stuff so I've said we want to add a conversational agent into the app. Let's start off by adding the real-time agent, allow call button. And I want to see the transcript underneath. We'll pass the variables, but we'll do that later. So then we paste in our docs. So let's see what it comes up with. We'll catch you once we've got this first simple version working. What's also pretty cool here is that because we pasted in the docs from another project, it's actually made a its own internal docs based off our convex project setup so it's taken the docs and tailored it for our project which i think is very cool and i didn't intentionally do it but it's a pretty nice bonus and i guess a nice bonus tip for you watching i guess cheers claude is all we can say to that okay okay here we are we have our contact with 11 labs apr so let's give it a quick test hey remind me what you're selling hey big dog how's it going i'm selling sales training sales training huh I've heard it all before. What's this going to cost me? I'm not looking to break the bank here. It's going to be expensive. I'm not sure this is for you. Whoa there. Hold on a second. Why so quick to dismiss me? I might be willing to spend some money if I see the value. What makes your sales training so special that it's expensive? Okay, there we have it. 
so I think what we want to do here is maybe not distract the user with the transcript. So maybe we can show that after. And what we can do also, which we did with Flow, is we can use their transcript to then give them a little bit of feedback, give them some, give them some pros, give them some cons, give them some suggestions. Cool. But I think before we do that, let's try and get some variables in. So maybe I could have a simple like situ tell us the situation you're in. Let me actually make a I'm gonna re nick because I think our Claude code got a bit confused with the setup. So what we'll do now is we'll add in yeah, we'll add in a input field which we'll then try and pass into Eleven Labs. Okay, so what we have here is it's built an input field. So what situation would you like to practice? And um, we've also, so once we've done that, we'll pass the dynamic variable. I'll zoom in a bit here. We'll pass the dynamic variable to 11 labs, but we need to set that up and it's going to save that in the database. Better styling. I don't know if about that. I could argue against that. So let's go back over to our agents. Let's come in here and let's try, let's try and add a variable here. New variable, call it training scenario. And then to test that it's working, what we can do here is say, so that will be done there and test variables. So let's try this one and let's give it a little spin. So the situation here is I'm selling microphones and people are saying I'm too loud. So let's start this call and see if we're getting any logs just to make sure. So if it works, we should hear back. Doesn't look very good, does it? Let me just drop this into Claude. Error. Try and get that fixed. Okay, so it looks like we've got access now. So if we are selling phones and we start the training call, then we can see that this is getting passed over to the 11 Labs agent. Hey, I understand we're working on we are selling phones. Cool, there we go. So it's just reading it back out. But what we can do is pass this context to the AI within the prompt so that it understands the context and then it can get creative and we can do some more on that shortly. Okay, I understand. Yo, yo, how are we doing? It's been a slow one on this and I haven't filled a bunch of stuff, but at the same time, I haven't done a bunch of development on this. I've given it a lick of paint. It looks a bit nicer and I've got a couple of things to show you, but we are here out on North now, so you can go and check it out, but let's give it a quick spin. So what training situation would you like to practice? I'm going to say, I'm going to say I'm selling a sales training AI tool, but the prospect is hesitant about the 5k price point. Okay, so before we jump into the demo, I'm going to come here and change the prompt. So the first message is going to say, hi there. Let's jump straight into our sales roleplay. So it sets the scene a little bit. And then for the system prompt, you are helping roleplay as a sales prospect. Give them objections around the scenario that they've given us. Try to keep focused on objections around the scenario and play tough to get, but fair. Don't just buckle down the objection at the first time. Try to push the user to work hard. Here's the training scenario with the variable info that we're sending over. And I said, have fun with it. Describe the desired agent, a tough but fair sales prospect doing sales role play. Okay, let's save that. And then let's go jump into our demo. Let's jump straight into the sales role play. Ready, go. Okay, how you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. Although I must admit, $5,000 seems like a pretty steep price for a sales training tool. Can you tell me more about why it's worth that much? Yeah, that's a fair point. Well, how much are you currently paying for your sales training? We haven't invested much in formal sales training recently. Most of our training is done internally, with senior sales members mentoring newer ones. It's not a perfect system, but it seems to be working okay. I'm always open to exploring new tools and strategies that could potentially improve our team's performance. Even if our current system is okay, there might be ways to make it even better and more efficient. But again, $5,000 is a significant investment, so I need to be convinced that your tool offers a substantial improvement over what we're already doing. Fair enough. And if you were to pay $5,000 a month, I know that's a lot. What would you expect for that, out of interest? If I were to consider paying $5,000 a month, I'd expect a comprehensive solution that delivers tangible results. All right, how much do you want to pay me? That's a good question. To be honest, I'm not sure I'm ready to make an offer yet. I still have some reservations about the value proposition. Okay, he is a tough cookie there. So we're going to end the call and it's going to analyze our performance. So we're going to send that off to OpenAI and they're going to analyze the transcript. So again, we've got key insights here. We've got performance scorecard, discovery, listening, next steps, qualification. We didn't score well there, did we? And we've got a few tips on what went well. So we acknowledged the prospect's concerns about price. Nice. And then we got areas improvement. So did not effectively uncover the prospect's underlying pain. Correct. I did not. 
And it's got examples from the transcript, which is cool. I think this would be super valuable if it was tweaked up, given into orgs, given context about what they're selling, given context about common objections they have in their sales process and potentially feeding it real sales transcripts to train these agents. I think this has legs. I think this is pretty sick. And it's a lovely B2B SaaS for someone to run with. Hats off to 11 Labs for the easy agent experience. But yeah, that wraps up the video today. Go and give it a spin, see how you get on. You saw our prompt, we've got a tough nut to crack. Maybe I could also add a few easy mode, hard mode, and sales master mode, perhaps. For those of you out there that want a tough challenge, but if you made it this far, cheers for watching. We'll catch you again tomorrow for another build. We're slowly getting to the end and I'm looking forward to not shipping an app every day. As fun as it is. Anyway, all the best.